Welcome to the Corp Vault channel. In our previous video, we discussed how to configure shared tape library and also discuss master drive pool and others. In this video, we will discuss how to split tape drives between drive pools and discuss tape drive properties. Please like, share, comment, or suggest. Subscribe for more videos and you can follow us on Instagram. Let's continue with drive pools and other topics. We have four tape drives configured under a drive pool. These four tape drives cannot be dedicated for specific backups, they are like, first in first out, so whoever reserves the drives first, gets to write data first. Let's take an example. Let's say we have two storage policies, one storage policy is configured for file server backup, and other for NAS backup with multiple sub-clients, and they are configured to run to this tape library, with four tape drives. Let's say, both policy backups run at the same time, and there are more than four backups running with multiple streams, so all tape drives are occupied. One job has taken two drives, whose backup size is in terabytes, then the other jobs have to wait for resources. What if we can split the drives across multiple drive pools, and assign them to the two different policies. Let's check how we can split drives across drive pools. From storage menu, launch expert storage configuration. Select the media agent, for whose drive pool we wish to split. If the media agent is also a library controller, then it is okay to just select one, if not, better to select the library controller media agent as well. Select Data Paths tab. Expand the tape library. Expand Master Pool. Expand Drive Pool. These are the four tape drives configured for this drive pool. Let's leave two tape drives under this pool, and split two tape drives into another drive pool. Right click on the drive pool. If you notice, you do not have the option to create a drive pool, that is because, drive pool is part of Master Pool. Right click on master pool. Here we see the option to add drive pool. Select add drive pool. Select media agent window. If you have selected more than one media agent, then select the desired media agent from the list. Once done, click OK. Expand master pool. You see the new drive pool created, showing as not configured. If you expand the drive pools, you see no drives listed under the new drive pool. Let's configure the drive pool. Right click on the drive pool. Select configure. In the configuration window, you see only one option, drive pool only available to select. Click OK. The drive pool is now configured. Right click on the drive pool, there is no option to add tape drives. Expand the other drive pool to which, all four tape drives are configured. We will pick drive 3, and drive 4 to be configured, to the new drive pool. Right click on the drive. Select deconfigure. On the confirm deconfigure window, select, yes, to deconfigure the drive. You see the drive with, yellow, red question mark. It's showing as detected, but not configured. Now, for you to configure it to the other drive pool, carefully, drag and drop, from current drive pool, to the new drive pool. Drive 4 is now listed under the new drive pool. Let's do the same for drive 3 as well. Right click on the drive. Select deconfigure. On the confirm the configure window, select, yes, to deconfigure the drive. Carefully. Drag and drop drive 3, from current drive pool, to the new drive pool. You see the two tapes, that is, drive 3 and 4, are listed under the new drive pool. Right click on the drive pool. Select, configure. In the configuration window, select, drive pool and all drives. Click OK. The new drive pool is successfully configured. 
as you see, tape drive 1 and 2 are under old drive pool, and, tape drive 3 and 4 are under new drive pool. Let's exit the configuration window, and check the drive pools, under the media agent. We see the two drive pools listed under the media agent, with their unique drive pool IDs. Let's verify if it's listed under the master pool. Right click on the master pool. Select properties. Under master drive pool properties window. Select drive pools tab. We see all the three drive pools listed, of which, two are from the same media agent, as seen here. Now that the drive pool is ready for use, you can use it, during create a new policy. Or add it as a data path, to an existing policy, post basic requirements are met. Our next topic to discuss is tape drives. Right click on the tape drive. Let's start with properties, so select properties. Drive Properties window. General tab. Name. Is the name of the drive. If you wish to rename the drive, type the new name in this field. Identification of the tape drive. Type. Is the drive type. Manufacturer. Is the name of the manufacturer of the drive. SCSI ID. Is the drive's complete SCSI ID, which includes P, port bus, T, target and Dell, logical unit number, learn. For NDMP drives, the NDMP drive access path is displayed. Firmware version, is the software version used by the library, to which the drive is attached. Serial number, is the serial number of the drive. Media agent, is the name of the media agent, that controls the library, to which this drive is attached. In case of a shared library, the name of the media agent, which controls the library's media changer, is displayed. Library. Is the name of the library to which the drive is attached. Use this description space, to record relevant information about the drive. Status tab. Status. Displays the status of the drive, if it's online or offline. Enable drive. Use this option to bring the drive online and make it available for use by the media agent. Disable or clear this option, to disable the drive, and make it offline. Please note, a drive's enable status, reflects its logical availability to the system, not its physical availability. For example, a drive can be enabled, even if it is physically unavailable, due to hardware failure. Broken. Displays whether the drive is broken, with status yes or no. The drive is marked as broken, when the number of hardware and software errors, exceeds the error thresholds established in control panel, hardware maintenance thresholds, drive maintenance tab. Offline reason. Displays the offline reason, when the status of the drive is displayed as offline. Drive cleaning. Cleaning required. Displays whether the drive requires cleaning, yes or no, based on the maintenance thresholds. Established for drive cleaning. Last clean time. Displays the most recent date and time, at which the drive was cleaned. The value is set when you mark the drive as cleaned, or if auto cleaning is enabled, and the system cleans the drive. Drive maintenance. Mark drive offline for maintenance. Select this option, to make the drive unavailable for data protection, data recovery, or auxiliary copy operations. However, the drive will be available to perform other administrative tasks, such as, drive cleaning, reset drive, etc. This option is useful, when you wish to perform administrative, or maintenance related tasks on the drive, such as drive cleaning, etc. Please note, if the media is already mounted in the drive, the drive may continue to be used, until the media is unmounted. Mark drive as read-only mode. Select this option to reserve the drive, for data recovery operations. Do note, if the media is already mounted in the drive, the drive may continue to be used until the media is unmounted. Active drive controller on media agent. 
displays the name of the media agent currently controlling the drive. Details will display the status and other details for the active drive controller. Drive controller tab. Fail over controllers help to view the details of active and inactive drive controllers for the drive and the following information is displayed for each of the available failover drive controllers. Drive controller is the name of the failover drive controller candidate. Media agent is the name of the media agent hosting the drive controller. Access path is part of the library's internal addressing scheme. We did discuss about this in our other video. SCSI ID the complete SCSI address of the drive, including SCSI port, target, and logical unit number. Enabled. When selected, the failover drive controller candidate will automatically be promoted as the active library controller when a failure occurs in the currently active drive controller. This option is very much useful when one of the two media agents has issues with tape drive access and marking the drive offline or making drive unusable with stuck SCSI reservation. When you disable any one of the controller, then the drive is shown as partially accessible under the status. Drive accessible indicates whether the drive is currently accessible from the media agent. Yellow color means working fine, and red color means drive has issues and needs attention. Reset helps to reset the drive controller. The button will be available only when the drive controller is offline. Details provides the status and other details associated for the selected drive controller. Drive controller details window. General tab. Name is the name of the drive controller. Host name is the name of the machine hosting the drive controller. Active indicates whether the drive controller is currently active or not, yes or no. Access path is part of the library's internal addressing scheme. Drive accessible indicates whether the drive is currently accessible or not. SCSI ID is the complete SCSI address of the drive, including SCSI port, target, and logical unit number. Odometers tab. Property or event type provides the drive usage criteria, and there are six different parameters. For each property, or event type, we have, threshold value, and actual value. Threshold, is the number of events of this type, that can occur before the media agent advises you to clean, or replace the drive. These are thresholds can be established, in the control panel, hardware maintenance thresholds, drive maintenance tab. Actual value is the number of events of this type, that have occurred since the drive was, last cleaned, fixed, or replaced. Hardware Info tab, provides the hardware related information for the drive. Compatible Media, it is the recording formats, which can be used to read and write to the drive. Ideally it can support N-2 versions, like, here you see this LTO4 drive can support, LTO3, and LTO2 tapes. Throughput. Read throughput for last hour. Is the read, write throughput information in the previous hour. If there has been no activity on the drive in the previous hour, the throughput will be displayed as zero. Write throughput for last hour. Is the average throughput, calculated based on the number of minutes, that the drive was used for the specific operation. We will end this video here. We will continue discussing the other tape drive options. Validate drive, clean drive, reset drive, etc. in our next video. Do subscribe to our channel, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos.